10 Ways to Avoid Buying Bad Jewelry. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 36. So stay <laughs> For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you as a, a, at a level of expertise as somebody that has been in the industry for a long period of time, has dealt with a large number of different manufacturers and uh, jewelry from other different manufacturers over the years, and can generally tell you, usually looking at a piece, kind of whether or not it's good stuff or not stuff. So what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna be a basic video of, here's 10 things you should always consider when buying jewelry. A lot of people look at jewelry as kind of a temporary best deal I can find kind of situation. But with body piercing jewelry, especially where it is located on the body, um, should determine that you wanna get something that lasts and is durable and is not gonna be near, need to be replaced in a short period of time. For example, if you have a barbell in your mouth, you want something of high quality that doesn't come unscrewed, that doesn't have ends that fall off and doesn't constantly need to be replaced um, or you know other parts of your body. Most people, when they buy a piece of body piercing jewelry, they generally keep it in their body from up to 10 to 15 years in some cases. So having a quality piece in there from the beginning can eliminate a lot of problems and frustrations later on down the road. So here's some here's 10 tips of things you should think about. Number one, do not buy jewelry that is packaged as a set or buy jewelry from large retail chains and franchises. The thing is with a lot of these manufa a lot of these retailers, they're buying jewelry in bulk from less than reputable manufacturers. Usually they're of lower quality. And of course, if you're getting a deal where you're getting five of one type of piercing that you would usually go to your piercer and he would charge you 15 to 30 dollars a piece for them, and suddenly you can get five of them for five dollars, there's something wrong. They're probably made of substandard material. They're not manufactured very well. Um, they're mass produced, usually in a third world country. There's not a really a lot of detailed or um, expertise or attention to quality. And you never know exactly what it's made out of. So don't look for deals and don't buy from large chains. Number two, buy from a reputable body piercing studio or online um, a retail store. There are a lot of uh, really low-end uh, online stores that stock very, very crappy, terrible jewelry. Usually you can tell just by the price that they're not what you want. Um, when it comes to buying from a reputable studio, if you have experience going in there and talking to the piercer and buying jewelry from them and you've been happy with the products they've been providing, then that is a good sign. Also, you may want to ask what manufacturers they stock or what type of materials and just have a discussion. I'm going to give you enough information on this, just this video, to have an educated discussion with your piercer as to whether or not they're stocking the jewelry that's right for you. Look for ASTM documentation. Um, they've changed their name to the International American Standards and Measures Laboratory Testing Book. Basically what they are is they're an industry-wide um, testing laboratory. Uh, they will take the metals that are supplied to them, in this case metal wire, test it for purity, and ensure that it is of the right grade, in this case you want implant grade, to be biocompatible. With that, there's some numbers you want to look at, and pretty much there's kind of a standard in the body piercing industry, and this is what they are for the four major types of metal that jewelry is made out of. First one, um, surgical stainless steel, or also known as implant grade steel. That one's going to be ASTM F138-86. Titanium, which is also an alloy, which is a lot of people have the misconception that it isn't, but it is an alloy. Should be six slash or slick six dash or slash is that slash yeah six slash four titanium which the ASTM number is F one thirty six 
for niobium. Niobium is a pure element. However, there are different levels of the purity of that metal or that element in its sold form and in wire form, which is used mainly for body piercing and jewelry um, and probably for wiring, I'm guessing. Niobium should be ASTM B392 is what you'd be looking for. With gold, there really isn't a, a separate party, but it is pretty much standard to uh, test it by carat weight. And in that case, you want between 14 carat and 18 carat. That's kind of that sweet spot. Now, um, if you're looking for other materials, there really isn't a standard for them. And that's one of the reasons why I don't suggest using a lot of acrylics, bioplastic, and all this other stuff. Um, if you are going to go in that direction, I would suggest you go with glass and that it is Pilex uh, brand or at that level. Number four, if the deal is too good to be true, it probably damn well is. I kind of already covered this, but I want to reinforce this. If one studio is charging you, let's say for an 18 gauge 3 8 ring, let's say uh, 12 bucks and the other one's charging you three dollars chances are the three dollar ring is from a very very low-end manufacturer and that studio doesn't give a rat's ass about the quality of the jewelry if you go to the right places you're going to pay for good jewelry now there is just because it's expensive doesn't always mean it's good usually there are kind of about three different levels when it comes to jewelry there's flat out garbage mass manufactured novelty jewelry. There is midline or what I like to refer to as a Kano line, which is jewelry that's made of the right material. It's made by good manufacturers um, and they do invest in their time in, in uh, eh, production, have mirror polish, it looks great, everything else, well durable, etc. However, they're not going to hand polish every one with angel, every individual piece with angel tears. There's not the quality uh, standards quite that you're going to find on that third tier. Now that middle ground is where most of us are at, where we can afford maybe twenty or thirty dollars for a piece of jewelry. That high end can get a little ridiculous in some cases, being three or four times what a normal piece of jewelry should cost. So. Do your research, especially if the person brings up a bunch of manufacturers, then it's definitely something you want to do some research on. And you might be able to find a cheaper price for that particular item online at some other online site than what you're going to pay in a retail environment. Another thing that you can kind of go buy, but it's not 100%, is buy American handmade or EU made jewelry. Usually because of uh, the third world doesn't really have the level of testing and measuring and there's not the quality acceptance or need that there is in the United States and in Europe to actually stay in business. You're probably going to find a better quality piece of jewelry if it's made in the U.S. or Canada or North America or in Europe than you're going to find that's made in Asia and etc. Not saying there isn't some good jewelry that is coming out of third world countries. I'm just saying that there's a more consistent level of quality coming out of first world countries. So that's something else to look at. Number seven, never, ever, 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 ever buy plated or uh, filled jewelry. Plating is not safe. It is going to wear off. It's going to flake. Your body's going to break it down. It's not going to be durable and it's not going to last. Do not buy plated jewelry. Even if the packaging says some nonsense term made up by the ear piercing industry, like hyperallergenic, it isn't. It Usually the undercoating is something that you're going to have a reaction to. Um, it can cause problems. Also, you're breaking off metal and possibly absorbing part of it. So plated is not good, no matter what it's plated with. I don't care if it's plated with titanium. I don't care if it's plated with surgical stainless steel. If it's plated with gold, it is not what you want. The money you would save isn't going to be worth it when you constantly have to replace that jewelry with another piece, another piece, another piece when that flaking plating comes off. Stick with solid. Solid's always better. Number eight, do not buy silver, copper, or other substandard metals. There's basically the holy four. The rest of them you should stay away from. 
That includes silver, copper, uh, and about 80 other different substandard materials. Also be aware that low-end manufacturers will often put charms and attachments or gym settings, et cetera, in these materials. They are gonna be against your skin and it can cause reactions. You should be especially concerned with this if you're sensitive to any type of metals. This can cause huge issues. Even though the packaging often will state something that sounds safe, the fact is is that uh, you know football angel playing or angel playing football with the giant thingy hang, or thing hanging off with two shooting stars. That's not made out of stainless steel. That's made out of something else, and your body's probably going to react to it. So. Stay away from substandard materials. Number nine, I kind of brushed on this already. If you're gonna need to buy something that is not a metal, I really suggest going with glass opposed to plastics. You're gonna have a better outcome, it is more durable, and it's going to last longer, and you're not gonna risk having pieces of plastic being absorbed into your body along with other chemicals. Glass uh, is kind of a more delicate. Um, it's usually fairly durable. If you take care of it, it can last a very long time. 10, inspect the jewelry itself. If you have the option to look at the jewelry loose without it being in a package, that's always a good sign. And some things you wanna look for is first off, is it internally threaded, if it is threaded jewelry. Internally threaded is where the ball is a screw and the post has hollow or been hollowed out or tapped at one end and then the ball threads into the post. Opposed to the post being the threading and the ball threading onto the post. It's usually a sign of a better piece of jewelry and it's gonna be more durable and last longer. The second thing you wanna look for, is there uh, the edges, are they smooth and rounded? There's no sharp edges of any type on the jewelry. Good jewelry is designed to be in the body for a long period and it's, evolved, it's designed to interact with other parts of the body and in some cases, even your partner. It's a great deal of care is taken to make sure that there's no sharp edges or points because even inserting the jewelry and changing the jewelry, if there's sharp edges or points, can cause issues. It can disrupt even a healed piercing, break it open, and start the healing process all over again. So always look, should have kind of just a slight rounded edge to it, and it should not feel sharp when you put it against your finger. Like if you take your thumb and put it on the edge of a table, you know how does that sharp feel? It shouldn't have that feeling. The third thing you wanna look for is, is the polish mirror light throughout? And what I say is when you take the jewelry apart, you take the ball off or the end off or whatever, does the finish look consistently mirror-like even on the ends of it and in the areas that normally would be hidden um, from the naked eye? I used to take an eye loop to every single piece of jewelry that came through. I've kind of laxed on that over the last couple of years, but it is a good sign. I'll always take a look at them, make sure that every point of that is mirror-like. Um, the fourth thing is the, the touch of the jewelry. When you touch the jewelry, it should have that same sensation you would have if you were running your fingers over a smooth glass. Um, it should not have any ruggedness to it. Sometimes titanium and niobium will have just a slight bit of that, but not. it should still have that kind of clear, kind of smooth surface like a fine piece of glass. Number five, this one's kind of barbell or threaded end related again. It should take a number of turns for that jewelry to tighten and loosen. Usually on average, it's about two to three turns is a good quality piece of jewelry. The less turns it takes, the more likely it is to actually come unscrewed and fall out. And generally the cheaper the jewelry manufacturer is and the lower the quality of the jewelry. One final thing to talk about is rings. If you, if you are getting a ring, either a bead ring, fixed ring, uh, seamless ring, or that type of, uh, or any of the type of seamless closures, that jewelry should be somewhat soft and easy and flexible. In other words, if it's implant grade steel or titanium, it should be annealed. It should be easy to twist and move back and forth, especially at thinner gauges like 18 and 20 gauge. So. I hope I've given you a lot to think about and hopefully you'll be able to make better jewelry decisions in the future. If I brought up any questions or you would like to add to the conversation or ask a specific question about jewelry, please leave a comment. 
Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more piercing and tattooing videos, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you never miss one of these. Also, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have lots of t-shirts and hats and so forth. Feel free to buy and show your support for us and also uh, look stylish while you're doing it. Other than that, I hope all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope you see if your body piercing needs in the future and jewelry needs. Have a good day, everybody.